Hi, today we will use the unit architecture to do a lung segmentation. We will take images like uh, this one. This is an example of a lung uh, x-ray Im image. And by using a data set that contains um, x-rays and mask, we would uh, take a fresh image and predict the lung in those images. So the first process would be, of course, uh, looking for a data set. We will use a data set, an X-ray data set uh, that is named Montgomery X-ray uh, data set. Uh, I will leave the link for this data set uh, in my uh, GitHub in the first uh, Python uh, program. However, you can look for it uh, using uh, Google, of course. And if we we'll, uh, dive through this uh, data set, you can see that we have a bunch of uh, X-ray images, but uh, a very important one is the mask for those uh, images and each mask contain a left lung and a right lung of mask after you download the images you can find the extra images in this uh, CR PNG folder as you can see these are the images of the lungs and there is another folder um, that called manual mask that contains two subfolder. One is the left mask and one is the right mask. So uh, we will use those masks in order to train our unit model and it will help us to find those lungs in a new and fresh image. Okay, so let's uh, start coding. Let's create the first uh, Python file. We'll call it uh, step number one. Uh, load and uh, load the data. Of course, we will load the data and prepare the data as well. So let uh, I will copy the link for the data set so you can use it uh, later. Okay. So. Uh, we will start by importing the necessary libraries OpenCV for uh, image handling, NumPy for numerical operations and the globe will be for uh, file handling uh, TQDM is it's more nice to have, it's for the progress uh, tracking Next we will set the height and the width for our images to 256 uh, pixel uh, the file path for the images and the mask are defined now. Um, make sure that you adjust these paths according to your dataset location. And don't forget the direction of the slashes if you are using a Windows operation uh, system. We then uh, list the number of images. Uh, left mask images and right mask images uh, that would be available in our dataset. Let's print the number of images in each of those folders. We are expecting, expecting to see the same number. So uh, let's print, let's first of all uh, um, load the names into these uh, variables and then we will print it. Let's run it. 
Okay, we have uh, 138 images and masks. Okay, in the next phase we load and display one of the images. So let's load the first one in position zero. Of course it's a it's a color image. Let's print the shape. As you can see, it's, it has a very high resolution, more than 4,000 uh, pixels. So we will resize it in order to display the image. We will resize it to our needs. Let's uh, um, load the masks as well. Uh, we will load the left and the right masks. And we will also resize them uh, for, the same, for the same dimensions as our uh, color and original image. We will load it as a grayscale, black and white uh, images. Next step is, is very important one. We are merging the left mask and the right mask together. So we basically building a, a new mask that we call it the final mask that contain the left and the right as a one image. So let's display the results so far. We're expecting to see the original image, the left mask, the right mask and the merge mask. As you can see, we have four images and the final mask uh, show us the position of the lungs in the original image. Okay, so basically we will do it for the full data set. But before that, let's uh, look at the uh, one mask and we will see the content. In order to see a content, we have to reduce it more. We reduce it to a, to a 16 by 16 and we will print and see the content inside this mask. Okay, let's run it and let's see the content of this mask 16, 16 by 16. As you can see, we have a zero that indicates the background and 255 that indicates the object. However, we can see more values like 191 and I believe that if we um, display the full, uh, the full image, there were more values that are uh, and not only zero and 255. Uh, so we have to replace the value and change it. So the, the zero one will stay zero that indicates the background and we will change any value above zero to one. So basically one will indicate the object and zero will indicate the background. So as you can see now we are changing the mask 16 that each of the values will be changed one if it's above zero and once again let's print this mask 16 so we are expecting to see values of zero and one. Let's run it and now one indicates the object and zero indicates the background. So now let's move on to building the full dataset. We will uh, run a, a for loop that loads the images and the mask, apply some uh, uh, processing and append them to a, a new respective uh, lists. And after this process, we will uh, convert it to a NumPy and save it to our local disk. 
So as you can see, we are running a, a for loop that contains the images, the left mask and the right mask. The TQDM help us to see the, the progress during the, the for loop. And we of course have to define for the TQDM the, the, the amount of value, which is the amount of the images. And now we are going to uh, do repeatedly what we have done for any particular image. We are going to do it for the full dataset. As you can see, we are loading each of those uh, images. Then we are resizing each of those uh, X-ray images to our uh, relevant uh, dimensions. Next, we are dividing the values to 255, so the model will run between 0 and 1. Then we are changing the type of the uh, values to float uh, 32, because the default is 64. It will reduce the, the memory consumption during the training. And then we are appending it into a new array called All Images. Next, we are dealing with the left mask. So we are loading the left mask. Then we are loading the right mask. Next step is merging the left mask and the right mask. Same that we have done with the first uh, image. Now we are resizing the mask to our relevant dimensions. And this is the important step, changing the values that every value above zero we will change to one. And we are uh, creating a new mask uh, images and appending this merge mask. And after the, the loop, we are uh, converting the uh, array of images to a NumPy array and the same for the masks. Now let's uh, print the shapes of the images and the mask number array. It's just to double, ch double check that we have loaded all the images and we're expecting to see 128 images. I have an arrow, one second. Ah, it should be a float. Okay, let's fix it and run it again. Another error. Ah, forgot the comma. Okay, let's run it again. As you can see, I'm coding it as freestyle. So sometimes can be some syntax error. Okay, now it's running. As you can see, uh, it's running for 138 images. Let's wait a few more sec seconds. And then we will print the shape of the both number array and expecting to see that all the images and masks were loaded. Okay, let's go. Okay. Now we will um, split the data for train and validate. We will use the standard uh, sklearn uh, library and the function train test split 90% of the images would be for train and 10% would be for validation
once again let's print the results the results for the trend and the validation we will print the shapes of those and number array Okay, I believe it's done. And let's also save um, those uh, split train and validation images and mask to the local uh, disk. Since it's a NumPy array, we will use the save function from NumPy. Let's choose uh, irrelevant names for, the, for the, uh, those arrays. and after that we will run it once again Okay, we are ready to run it. Once again, we can see the progress of the for loop. Then we are expecting to see the split between train and validation in the 90% split. And then the saving process to the disk. Okay, as you can see here are the shapes and let's look for those four files okay done now we are ready for the next step and the next step will be building the unit uh, model so let's start with it okay now we will build the uh, the unit uh, model it's basically a, a straightforward uh, process I've done it in my previous uh, tutorial as well. Uh, basically, in this section, we are uh, creating a, the, and constructing the unit uh, architecture. So we start with importing the relevant uh, TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow uh, libraries and functions. And then we are creating the, the first convolutional uh, block. We, we define this convolutional block that consists of two convolutional layers followed by a batch normalization and a ReLU activation. And we are going to reuse this uh, function when we'll build the, 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 main, the main build the model function. So as you can see, we have one convolutional layer, one batch normalization, one activation, and then we are creating another convolutional uh, layer and another batch normalization, uh, which is a regulation uh, layer, and another activation uh, relo layer. Each one of them follow with this X, that means that we are building a stack of uh, layers. And then we return that X, which is a stack of those Layers. Next, we are building the, the function. This is the main unit uh, function. Uh, we specify, um, when we build the model, we specify the number of filters for each block. As you can see, uh, the unit has several uh, steps or several blocks of the previous function 64, 128, 256, and 500L. 12, and then we are running a loop through those uh, filters and we are creating those convolutional blocks uh, using the conv block uh, function and this is the the left part of the unit uh, what we call the encoder uh, the encoder basically down samples the input image 
extract the feature the features at a multiplied level and we had iterated uh, through the number of uh, those uh, filters and we are applying the convolutional blocks and down sampling using the max pooling you can see the max pooling in every time we are running the con block uh, function then we are creating the bridge the bridge from the enabler uh, to sorry from the encoder to decoder and after the bridge we are reversing the process since we would like to build a uh, layers that in the in a, another order of filters that means it will be 512 256 and etc as you can see it's another uh, for loop and this decoder is upsampling the, the features and combine them with with uh, features from the encoder through those skip connections and this help us to prevent a uh, spatial uh, information and finally the the output uh, layer this layer is basically a single channel convolution followed by a sigmund activation activation it's a, a sigmund since it's a basically a binary question it's a zero or one and zero would be the background and one would be the object so that's uh, how we construct the unit architecture you can follow my previous um, previous tutorials that I explain more uh, deeper about the the unit architecture with more a uh, more uh, let's say um, complex uh, examples of the unit okay now let's build our customized model as you can see on the left side we are choosing a name let's call it step number three step number three train unit and we are starting with importing a uh, numpy and first of all we uh, load the saved uh, numpy arrays the, the one for the train and the one for the validation and of course images and masks as well and um, so let's wait a few more seconds and let's create those variables that will hold those uh, numpy array Okay, let's uh, print the shapes of uh, the loaded uh, number array just to double check that everything okay. As you can see, we have four number array filled with the data. Next, let's define the height and the weight. Of course, it's the same as the saving the data in the step in step number one. Now it's a really important uh, command. First of all, we will import TensorFlow, uh, but then uh, watch we are loading from step number two we are all importing the build model function that we wrote earlier next we will add more functions that are relevant for the training the model checkpoint uh, and the early stopping and more hyperparameters the shape of each of the images and our learning range and let's define the batch size as four images per batch it's a uh, depend on your uh, memory usage you can try a, a higher values but 4 is good enough epochs let's define it as 50 and let's try loading our model I you can see I have an error yes the shape I forgot to write equals let's run it again have another error let's go back to our step number 2 I have an the batch normalization okay i forgot the a let's add the a character and also the same it should be right written same no. okay let's run it again okay as you can see 
we print the summary of our model so it was loaded correctly. Now let's define our uh, optimizer. It will be of course an Adam and we are sending the arguments of the learning rate. Now and then we compile our model using a binary cross entropy loss and the Adam optimizer that we defined in our previous line. Next, we will define the steps per epoch. Basically, it's the number of images, our train images, divided by the batch number. And the seal function is basically uh, rounding the, the results. So it would be a, 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 like an integer. Validation step is the same, but it's for the validation images. Now let's define uh, the file name for the, for the saved model. Let's call it a lang unit uh, .h5. And now we define the callbacks. In the callbacks, we define three functions. One is the model checkpoints. That means that we are going to save our model each time it's been improved. Each time that the, the epochs uh, train a better model, it will save to this file name. Next, we are going to monitor the validation loss. And if we don't see a change after five epochs, we will uh, change by a factor of 0 0.5. And at last early stopping, we will monitor the validation uh, accuracy. And if the validation accuracy was not improved after 20 epochs, we will stop training and we will have uh, our best uh, save model. Finally, we train the model using uh, the training data and the validation data. And uh, of course, we will send all the previous parameters. This is the, the bed size, the epochs, and more and more. And previous uh, variables. This is the validation data, of course, the, the images and the masks for the validation. Now the validation steps. It's all was uh, defined and calculated uh, earlier. So I'm just uh, putting the relevant variables in as, as an arguments for this fit function. And these, at last, it's the callbacks. I have an error here. I have to put the mask of the train, not the mask of the validation. Of course, fix it. Let's run it. As you can see, it start the training. This is epoch number one. As you can see, the accuracy, the validation accuracy is 0 0.73. This is after epoch number two. It was improved to 0 0.736. So uh, I believe we, we will stop here for uh, uh, and do a fast forward. Direct directly to the last epoch and we continue later. So we, ju we jumped directly to the last epoch. As you can see, it was early stopped after 47 epoch and the validation accuracy is 0 0.98, so a very good one. So now let's uh, test our model. So let's create another Python file. We call it a step number four, test the model. And we, this would be the test image and we would like to get a segmentation of the lungs in this test image. Of course, I will add this test image to the Python code to my uh, repository in GitHub. So the first step will be a load the saved model. So we are using the load model function from the cross model. 
and we will print the summary of this model just to double check that it was loaded successfully. So let's run it. As you can see, we have the structure of the model. So let's continue to the next step. Then we load a test image and we will uh, reprocess uh, this image to the prediction. So let's copy the path for this image and change the direction for the slashes. And we will use the I'm read function to load this image. Then we will resize it since the dimension uh, in, for each image can be differently. So we define the width and height. And we will send those arguments to the resize function. Now we are uh, dividing it to 255. So the values would, would be between 0 and 1. And now we are doing an expand dims that we are creating a batch of images that contains only one image. And now we are running the prediction. Uh, the prediction, the outcome of the prediction would be on the p variable. And we would like to uh, get the result and print the shape. As you can see, basically the result is an image by 256 by 256 by 1. So basically we, we got a segmentation uh, of the process, but the values are between 0 and 1. This is a sigmoid uh, function, sigmoid model. So we have to, to change the values. So since it's a binary classification, we will change and replace all the values under 0 0.5, we will change it to 0 and all the values above 0 0.5 will be changed to 255. 0 will be black color and 255 would be a white color. So if we step forward, we are creating a new image that the white color would be the object and the black color would be the background. So as you can see in this uh, uh, last step, we resize the, um, the original image, our test image, and we displayed along with the predicted uh, mask. We would uh, reshape the original image and we will reshape the mask image and we will put them uh, next to each other so we can compare the position of the left lung and the right lung. And of course, you can try it later with uh, another test uh, image. I believe it will uh, work uh, fine. But as for now, we are um, resizing, as I said earlier, both uh, images, the original and the predicted uh, mask. And now we are displayed using the I'm show function. And I believe we are ready to run it. Yes, let's run it. As you can see, we have both images and we have the predicted lungs. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You're most welcome to subscribe to my channel. More tutorials and more videos will be uploaded very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.